Well, good morning to you. Thursday morning. Oh, yeah, coming on now. You're feeling quite warm out there. I don't know what the temperature is. Oh, it's 12 degrees, it says. It's a bit cloudy, but there we are. It's feeling warmer. Everything is getting on. Yes, I've had my little grass cutter out and cut my top of my head off a bit, trimmed her off. I want to be able to see out through my glasses properly. I hope everybody's all right. Staying well and staying safe. That's all I can say. I mean, even the pulling out was quite nice. I'm going down the day centre today and do a bit of, um, I'm going to do a talk on the donkey sanctuary today to them down there. Poor people, eh? Don't put up with me. But there we are. So it's Thursday morning. And uh, now birthdays today, I got the, uh, well, oh, and the Salvation Army today from 10 till 12. I'm sorry I won't be there, but it's really, really good. Got in a nice cup of tea and bit chat with everybody down there. Andy Tyson is your birthday today, believe it or not, but it is. George Pritchard as well. Happy birthday to you as well, George. Joe Holtaway, it's your birthday as well today. My gosh, there's lots of them. Eileen Peller, Eileen Peller, is her birthday today. Happy birthday to you. And to Loveday Jenkins, a dear great friend of mine. Um, I, I say happy birthday, but you know what I mean. I, I, I'm so sorry to uh, hear of your mum's loss. Um, so just take today and um, just uh, we're, we're thinking about you anyhow love day that's you know stay strong stay strong now i'm going to do a little um story here today this one's called day out Trenkron. oh hello hello is that you here tracer my handsome yes i'm fit again now i'm due for another day suppose seemed like it was only your yesterday don't i talking to me well better me decide to take the twins that's decky you know the one with the third eye and Silas, that one there, was took out the oven before he was backed. Catch your bones, he was. Sometimes he looked like a dying winner. Anyhow, going up Trent Crom for an afternoon feast. Picked the right day, I'd believe. Sun was shining. But the wind was blowing a bit of a Of course, Feather says, when we to get to the top of Trent Crom, we should get on the loo side of the rock for a bit shelter. Now, Mother, says Feather, poke the fire, will he? And put the kettle forth to boil up the jug of tea for this afternoon. Talking about adders up Trent Crom, mother was teasy as adder, cause she'd got to get blister side of her toe. Silas, he was going out with a little man from Brepper. Well, she lives right next door to Brepper Harbour. When the tide comes in, uh, she sits down for breakfast with her welly boots on. Thin little man, some wish looking, as well she is. Legs on her like linnets, poor soul. Dora, I'd believe she was called. And Silas wanted Dora to come with us up the top of Trank Rom to watch the sun set on. Mother was busy making saffron cakes and heavy cakes and pastas and a jug full of tea for the afternoon trip. Decky was going on long, like, up like a long dog up there Trank Rom, mother and father dragging all the chairs and food. Of course, Silas and Dora was always three scats behind the rest. Mother then hollering to father. She got her leg caught in some brambles. Father out there free, but was not too long for her leg was blot up like a quilkin. Still, we made to the top of Trent Crom. Mother started opening the basket of food, then she called to Silas and Dora. If I got to tell you twice once more, come as here and set them aside feather. Tell us a yarn feather, will he? asked Dickie. Well, boy, looking back over the future, did I tell he about Uncle Combo? Well, he didn't marry till late in life, says Feather. Well, why did he wait so long, asks, says Silas. Well, says Feather, he met a nice little maid who was nearsighted and hard of hearing, and Combo thought if he was out all day working, she would be good company for the dog. Mother started handing out the pastas. Decky asked Father. Mother says we should always eat a balanced diet. What is, what's that there? Well, she means eat a pasty in each hand, says Feather. And all of a sudden a stranger appeared from nowhere. Father nodded his head. Uh, father nodded he was a stranger by the way he walked and father says to him what's on pard well says the stranger i'm trying to find contrivy lighthouse but the smell of those lovely pastas brought me this way sit down says feather have a pasty so the stranger started to eat away here hang on a minute says feather you always eat a pasty with the crimp on the right so the stranger turned the pasty round proper way for eating coarse hold of gravy come out of the bottom of them then the tedders and beef all over him Gosh, she was in some coddle he was. I tell ye, soon the stranger decided to be on his way. How far tis it to could drive from here, the stranger asked. Oh, about mile and a half as the crow flies. Bit further if you're walking. 
See you again, says Feather. Now, mother, let's have a bit of saffron and keg and I get a cup of tea. Oh, handsome to us, I tell you. Of course, says Feather. There's Uncle Herbert, another one married lad. Had a good job courting some long time. Then he'd ask, then he'd ask his girlfriend to marry him. Well, she replied, how much do we earn? Oh, about one pound fifty a week, Herbert says to her. Well, that wouldn't keep me in handkerchief, replied the girlfriend. Well, what's the matter with he? Got, says Herbert, got a cold of he. Soon dark clowns were gathering, then the rain, floods of them, wet leaking through to the skin we was, the home to go as fast as we can. The place was like a troy town, I tell ye. My car is at the time. This time I was stoking up the slab for supper. See you again. Have a nice weekend.